Howdy, everyone. Welcome to Tilson Live. I'm Eric Aller, part of the fourth generation of the Tilson family, joined as I am each and every week by the one and the only Don, our vice president of marketing and customer experience. Hello, Don. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing, Eric? Doing good. Well, it is Tuesday. It is two o'clock. We are live on Facebook, live on YouTube. Uh, it's two o'clock central because I know we have people from other time zones that join us from, from time, mm -hmm. time. We do. Two o'clock on Tuesdays. Um, so, Howdy, everybody. Jump in. Tell us where you're watching from, where you're building, what part of the process that you're in. If you're just now thinking about getting started on this journey of building a home on your land, we want to hear from you. If you're in process at some point, either you've signed a contract or you're under construction or you are finished and you're enjoying your forever home, I want to hear from you too. Um, but yeah, talk to us. We're here for, we are live on Facebook, live on YouTube, and we have a really, really special topic to talk to you about today. Dawn, what is it? Um, we are going to talk all about our most popular floor plan, the Canyon. Um, so it's our very popular model there in Bryan and just going to kind of talk everybody through um, what makes that model so popular, some of the options that are available and show some some pictures from houses that our customers have done in addition. Yeah, to so model. you're going to get to see more than just the model home, which of course you mm -hmm. can do a tour of that obviously live here in Bryan. I mean, if the model's over there. Um, so you'll be here in Bryan to see it. You can see it on our website, of course, but also we're going to be showing you some different things that our customers, you guys, have actually done that we're going to feature in today's live. But first and foremost, we want to be sure that everyone knows the whole format of this show is mm -hmm. for you, the prospective person who's thinking about building a home on your land, really anywhere. But certainly if you're thinking about doing it in rural areas of Texas, you're at the right place. We're going to be sure you have all the information that you need to make the best decision for yourself and your family. Um, but even if you're not going to be building in Texas, you're still going to get some great information here, good questions to ask, um, stuff that we get asked every day. We've been being asked for 90 years. Mm -hmm. um, and so we feel like we've got some pretty good answers uh, to most of these questions. But if you have questions at all, as we're doing this about design, financing, customization, site preparation, looking for land, um, mortgages, how the appraisals work, how much can you customize, what do you do about utilities? That's what this show is here for. We want to hear from you guys, Absolutely. whatever questions that you have, we are here to help. Also, we have a big community of people on this show that uh, also offer help to one another. So right. we, we love very much our, our Tilson customers and their they're the most educated people in the built on your lot planet um, because they came here for their information to our award winning show, right? It's an award. Uh, yes. Yeah. We actually won two awards. It's kind of weird. But. <laughs> <laughs> what, what awards did, 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 did the show win? We won. Um, most innovative content. I'm and... so I can pat myself on the back. I was prepared yes. for that today. <laughs> most innovative content um and then also uh best organic social media oh. campaign so because we don't we every once in a while we'll, we'll put a little bit of advertising weight behind it but for the most part we just we just go live and you guys show up and, so. and one important thing to to know about this as you if you would share this show with other folks we don't gate it Okay, mm -hmm. so what do I mean right. by that, Don, when I say we don't gate the show? What do other builders do or other venues do, other webinars, things like that? Because we're not the only place you can come to for information, right? Surely not. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, yeah there are some. Somewhere else. Go help yourself. <laughs> Um, yeah, a lot of places will restrict who can access it. So um, they're either going to require you to do a login or pre-sign up. Um, we do require pre-sign up for our 
in-person seminars, but that's really so we know how many chairs to have. Yeah. Um, it's the only reason we do that. Um, you're still welcome to walk in. You're just running the risk of not having a chair. Um, but all of this content is completely non-gated. It's available. It's out here in the public. We do put up every single question. We do answer every single question. You know, we're not censoring what's going on um, with any of it. We're not hiding it from you. You can actually see in public everything that's being said because that's one of the other things that like with people who do gate their webinar content, they also hide the comments. So they're only showing you the questions that they, they want to answer. Um, right. So we're transparent as we can be. We are not perfect. Yeah. So spoiler alert. Dawn is, yeah. Eric is not, so you get the, <laughs> you're, you're halfway there. But but truly, guys, this this information is for y'all. So mm -hmm. um, we, we want you to have the most information possible. We believe, you know, it, it's it's they they gate it. I understand why businesses would gate this content, right? You got to hide your the, the 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 secret recipe, the secret sauce, as I've heard it referred to. Uh, we can't be letting competition see what we're doing. Like, forget it. You want to try and copy us and build on your lot? Best of luck. Mm -hmm. Give me in 90 years and we'll talk about it. Okay. Like you'll get your bumps, your bruises, you'll have no hair. Like these things will happen to you. Jump on in. The water's fine. So yeah. uh, anyway, we got anyone. So join us, ask us questions. Tell us where you're watching from. Tell us where you're building. We want to hear from you guys. And Don, who's watching so far? Well, we have Will coming in from Klondike. Hey, Will. Hello. Good to see you. Um, we got Tiffany coming in from Yoakum. Nice. We have Wes coming in from hey, Greenville. Wes. Welcome he back. moved from Phoenix. I remember Wes. Uh, we got Jessie. Hello from Gillespie Hello. County. She is home with a sick kiddo. Well, I'm sorry right. you're home. I'm sorry this kid kiddo, is sick, but I'm glad that you could join us. Yeah. Um, Wesley is sharing. He loves the canyon. We moved in last July and loving it. Awesome. Beautiful. We've got Janet. Howdy from Grayson County. Our live oak is ready for texture. I hear cabinets are ready for delivery. Oh, oh. that's great. Awesome. Um, and Wes's Canyon, he has a single floor, the single floor plan with vaulted ceilings. Okay. Nice. We've got Thomas watching and building in Curtin. Dirt just got dropped inside our form minutes ago. Um, oh. Our Angelina is officially under construction. Exciting. Thomas is like right down the road. <laughs> right there. Nice. You should go stop by on the way home. It's, it's on the way, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> We have Wendy coming in from Kingwood, uh, building a Republic Grand Ranch, and Forms went in yesterday. Nice. Awesome. Yes. Thanks for your patience. Appreciate you waiting. It's going to be worth it. Uh, we've got Alicia. Hey, we just started. We just got our start date for late February for the Canyon model. Excited to hear this chat. Oh, very awesome. cool. All right. Well, this is for you, Alicia. We've got Julie and confetti for Julie. She closed on Friday. Hey, uh, love our hey. house and your award winning show. <laughs> Thank you, Julie. <laughs> it really did win awards. Don't it did that teardrop one. Yeah, it's right behind wherever yeah. that is, wherever that is. I don't know. Um, we've got Christopher uh, getting released to construction in February for our Canyon Sea in Guadalupe County. Uh, so excited! Awesome. We have John watching from Pipe Creek. Howdy, Hi, howdy, John. And Alicia is in Lockhart, Caldwell County. Oh, nice. Yep. Yeah. And uh, we've got Kenneth. The Kilgore's got foundation poured today in Deer Forest. Awesome. Oh, right next cool. to right. Republic Grand right Ranch. Next to Republic Grand Ranch. Yeah. And we've got Linda just dropping by to say hi. I have to work today at two, so I won't be able to watch. Have a great live. Oh, well, thanks cool. for saying hey. And you can as, you can come back and watch later. As Don said, you can watch later. And uh, Alicia, I wanted to hear from you at Lockhart because that is the barbecue capital of Texas, thereby making the barbecue capital of the world, obviously. So I, I need to know which of the barbecue places is your family's favorite there in Lockhart. So I know you got Blacks, you got a couple other ones, Smith. So just tell me if you have a favorite, which one it is, or if you have a favorite barbecue item at a particular place. Okay, so I won't lock you down to one place, but and anyone else who wants to chime in with barbecue recommendations, I'm open to that as well. I do not know right. what Lockhart is. No. Yeah. I've been to Blacks. It's legit. Yeah. It was a big deal. All right. Um, Jesse Sharon, the Peace Home has texture. Can't wait to see it all come together. There we go. And then we also have a, a Chris, oh, Chris Chisholm, Chisholm Trail. Trail. That's where he is. Okay. Awesome. Oh, oh, here we go. Barbecue no, debate. Right. Not going to lie. Cooper's in, in Lano takes a cake for me. Don't hate me. No, you're right. You're right. It, it, it's it's not to be messed with. That was it. And, and they have branched out to others. They're still pretty good. But the one, the original one in Lano is, 
Oh yeah, Jesse's good. Yep, Jesse's Jesse's agreeing. Yep. <laughs> and then we've got Robin and Alito built in a subdivision a couple of years ago, watching to learn the full custom build process. Robin, you are in the, the you are in the the mecca of building a subdivisions right now. Alito, Texas is fast growing. Parker County is blowing up. So yeah, if you want to move out to rural land a little bit west or south of that, this is this is the way to go. Mm-hmm. And then Will Sharon missed last week. I uh, was on vacation. I got some farm stuff to get caught up on. Flag out where I'm building a brooder building and clean up cow lot to do a get a compost, compost area. Yeah. Awesome. That place got work written all over it, Will. Yes. Seen it. it looks, look, we well, all keep dropping your comments, project. questions, and things like that. Particularly you folks that are thinking about doing that, Robin, and, and those like Robin that are considering this, jump mm -hmm. in. We've got all kinds of tabs open on our computers. That way we know we'll never have to use them. Um, <laughs> We're going to do this presentation, ask questions throughout. We will pause for some videos and for some questions. And uh, again, we want to help you guys get to the answers that you need. So, Absolutely. All right. Well, let's start talking about that canyon. All right. So our canyon model, um, like I mentioned, it is our most popular home um, right now. And just you can you can see why just looking at it, it's got that classic farmhouse look um, is the elevation we went with on the model. So you've got that big rock and porch front, you know, rock and rock and chair front porch um, happening. And, you know, the cedar accents, it's just a beautiful, very welcoming home. Just love it. Um, so the standard floor plan is a three bedroom, two and a half bath um, at 2,255 square feet. Um, and it's a very open concept. You've got the family room, kitchen and dining area all, all connected together. Um, in addition to the three bedrooms, it also does have a study um, that's very easy to convert into a, a fourth bedroom um, and kind of use that guest suite however you, however you wanna do that. Um, one of those bedrooms is to the, the bedrooms is very large. Um, so this would be a house that your kids might, might have a little bit of a fight, fight happening over who gets, who gets the bigger bedroom, but good, good size bedrooms. Um, one very, very large. And the way this one is kind of laid out, it's not split bedroom, like once you know, on each side of the house, but it is nice that the master is, you know, off of its own, own entrance off of the family room and only shares, a wall with the bathroom. So there is, everybody has that privacy and it, it's separated in that way. Beautiful. And then the model in Brian, we did do some structural options with. So that's what you'll see um, when you go and visit that home. Um, the first thing we did is there is an alternate side low garage um, on that. So we did go ahead and do the garage um, with our Brian model. So you'll notice it's, it's, it's wider um, when you go out there. And that's a very, very nice large space, adds in that drop zone um, there that so that you can kind of dump everything as you're coming into the house and not track it. Track it all throughout. Um, we also did the alternate kitchen um, in the model. Uh, so you'll see it's a different island orientation um, and just very, very large eating bar. It's that standard instead of being the curved um, island. It's, it's nice. It's just a, the rectangle. Uh, we also did a special ceiling treatment in the family room. So we've got the box beam ceiling. Uh, we went with the cathedral ceiling in the master bedroom um, and also did a really nice accent wall that you'll see when we get there. And we did the Jack and Jill bathroom. Um, so in that space, you'll see they all have their own, they have their own sink area that's then connected. Um, by the rest of the bathroom, so everybody can kind of stay stay separate. Um, and then we also did add some additional uncovered porch in addition to the covered porch. Um, and we went ahead and did the two story version, so it's got that upstairs bonus room that also comes with a powder room. Um, so that took us up to twenty eight hundred square feet um, on the model versus the standard plan. And Dawn, you may have mentioned this. I'm sorry. If, did, did you mention it was re reversed? The model. Oh, I did not. Yes. And yeah. we, we reversed it. Um, so you're, you're looking at the mirror when you, when you come into the, to the Canyon, we, we do get that question a lot, guys. We can very easily reverse any of our plans just based on the orientation on your lot, which in this case on our lot, we needed to go the other way. Yeah. Work best. All right. So let's take a look at that model. Guys, put your questions into the chat. We'll answer every one of them. Mm-hmm. So as you pull up to the design center in Bryan, Texas here, you're immediately going to notice 
the Canyon model and how we've used extensive use of a farmhouse style elevation. So you're going to notice board and bat hardy plank vertically done. You're going to notice a lot of cedar accents, so shutters, headers, the posts, all done in a real contrasting color as well as the roof to really set this home off in a real country setting. As you approach the model home, you're going to notice that there's a large front porch. We have rocking chairs set up, but just trying to set the stage for you to know how easily you could enjoy your outdoor space. Really, really big front porch, easy for sitting, having a cup of coffee, watching the sun come up. All right. So yeah, I've actually tried to do, I did a little bit of a live there once upon a time from that front porch, uh, mainly yes. because I want to sit in the blue rocking chair on the front porch and just watch. So th this this facility is across the street from, I guess it now the Bryan Municipal Airport. I think it, what it used to be called Coulter Airfield and they would be a lot of people practicing like touch and goes. And at a time when I was working here a long time ago, baby Eric, um, like 21 years ago, the Aggie skydiving team would actually fly out of here and they would land for the most part at the airfield. Um, which was interesting. For the most part. Yeah. By and large. Oh, well, that's cool. Yeah. Good for yeah. Me. We, we, we did try to go live from there and we, we was, it was good on the front porch. After that, the Wi-Fi was not, was not having it. So that's why we, no. we do it this way now. Um, but yeah, that's just, just a big, just a beautiful, beautiful house. Just so inviting. Um, yeah. And as you can see, we've, you, Kelsey's put in all of the color selections for everybody who always asks us about that. So you know what we've used in the models. Um, just very pretty. And then here are the additional elevations. So we talk a lot about the elevation in the exterior of the home and how on the inside it's it's pretty much exactly the same. So I just want to show you some of the different, different alternatives for this plan. Um, so you've got the traditional brick gable um, there. And we have had some customers who actually add the wood um, shutters to it to kind of give it even even a different look um, there as well. You've got the Elevation B is that craftsman style. Um, so it's adding in um, some stone there and you know the, the beams are have the stone bases. Um, so just a different different look with the stone wainscot. Um, and then the D is the ranch elevation as we call it, which has got a little bit brings brings back that wood, also goes to board and batten siding along with the masonry. Beautiful. Um, but let's, let's go ahead and take a look at the rest, the next step of the house, which is the living room kitchen in that foyer. So let me pull that up. As you walk in the foyer of the Canyon model, you're going to be immediately greeted by 10 foot, six inch ceilings in the foyer and the family room. And it really draws you in. You can see all the way out the big, beautiful fixed glass windows onto the outdoor living space and can easily see yourself in this home with your family, enjoying your country living. So what's unique about the Canyon model home is that the, the way that we've designed the kitchen, dining area, and family room to really just be one large room, which is the feedback we've gotten from our customers building in rural areas. They just want a large space for their family, extended family and friends to gather, and just a beautiful kitchen that's set up for entertaining and also actually ease of use. So in the kitchen of the Canyon model home, we've opted for one of our alternative kitchens where we have a large, even space island that's really, really great for cooking, cutting, preparing, buffet style or just sitting and gathering. Some of the other things you're going to notice in the kitchen when you go in is extensive use of painted cabinetry. Now we have a, a contrasting color on the island and the in a blue and then we have the white on the main cabinets. Of course you can always do a stained cabinet. Whatever you want to do we can accommodate that. What you're going to also notice when you're standing at the sink of the island is you're immediately looking out into the family room. So it's easy place to keep working in the kitchen if you're doing that, preparing food, getting the barbecue ready, and still be able to engage and entertain with everyone that's in the family room. It's just a really great use of the space. The way we design the eating area in the Canyon model home is really to be a country eat-in kitchen. So it's got plenty of space if you wanted to do like an eight person table for a formal event, but it's set up for everyday use that has beautiful views on your outdoor living space, onto the beautiful property that you bought, which is why you did this in the first place. So sit there, have a cup of coffee, your morning cereal, and just enjoy that view outside. Did I really say cereal? You did, you did. People still eat cereal. Okay. I eat cereal. Okay. All right. We're good. We're covered <laughs> up the world. Make sure. Sometimes we have cereal for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> I do like a good breakfast for dinner. Not cereal. Yes. Breakfast. <laughs>
<laughs> you gotta get the cinnamon life, Eric. Like it's just okay. Nice. All right. It's great. It's great. It's great. Okay. So that big, beautiful model kitchen is actually the alternate kitchen um, on the canyon uh, is what you're looking at. So it actually changes that the eating bar from being curved to being the, the larger rectangle. Um, and so that's what you're seeing when you go in there. And, and like you mentioned, it's just got that huge dining area um, in there that easily would fit even a larger table than what we've got in the model. So just yeah. a great Great space, very much connected, you know, to the living room, um, so you can you can see everything that's going on. And again, all the colors there, which is we have posted, um, mm -hmm. both for the model and and uh, what will be in here, obviously in the show notes um, themselves. So, yeah, the the and we find people putting features of this island in in other homes. Um, again, it you know it's it's just a real the, the two tone is a, is a very current style right now and we just mm -hmm. we, we'd like the what was Kent Moore able to do with those um really kind of a rustic antique farmhouse feel right like everybody wants the look and feel of their home to be 100 years old but they want kind of all the energy efficiency and modern convenience right. of your home um so the canyon does a really really good job of accom accommodating both of those obviously so we want to check in on some of these folks um, yes. We want to contrast the included kitchen first. Maybe we should do that. Oh, yeah. And then this is the base kitchen for everybody. This is what that would look like with the curved, the curved island, um, you know, very similar size um, and everything, just a different, different orientation um, on there. So very, still very nice kitchen. You've got the big corner pantry, um, you know, all of the, all the same stuff. And it's got that it's bar tops higher um, on the side than it is. So it's kind of hiding everything that's behind. And of course, also noticing it would be it's a one piece range and oven on the mm -hmm. kitchen that's in the in the base plan. And then when you go to the alternate, it, it upgrades to a two piece cooktop with separate oven. And we did, of course, microwave building, all that kind of good stuff. So, yeah. Very, very nice. All right. Let's check in on these questions. Um, so Kenneth is building the driftwood in Deer Forest. He's curious about the timeline from here for completion. Yep, and uh, I was I was cheating and texting some of our uh, construction team to try and get a, a solid answer for them. So I'll give you a tentative answer. Uh, obviously, Caleb would be able to get you a more concrete one, Caleb Horton. Um, <laughs> but I, I know our goal is going to be somewhere between the 200 and 225 day mark. Um, obviously, the the quicker the better would be good for probably everybody involved, simply because uh, they get you in the house sooner, um, get you closed on your loan sooner, and gets. Uh, you know, Tilson gets paid that way. So we would be happy about that. But, you know, it'll take as long as it takes to get it done right. That I can tell you. So. Okay. Great question. All right. Um, Janet is sharing her granddad was a pastor in Lockhart. We Ooh. ate at Black's every Sunday after church, but we love Smitty's too and agree about Cooper, Cooper's and Lano. Yeah. Those are pretty good memories. Not bad memories. Yeah. Awesome. Um, Wesley Sharon, we ended up doing a 27 by 27 garage um, off the kitchen with the mud room. Awesome. Very nice. Very nice. Um, and we have the Cunningham starting the process to build in B County. Met with Talon this past Saturday. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. And um, we have Robin asking, what is the average upgrade cost that your customers add to the base price? That is a great question, Robin. We've got it's mm -hmm. pretty pretty historically, it's been uh, oh, I got I got Kobe Kobe is texting back. So uh <laughs> Uh, he did say that, that 200 would be a good number. So we're, we really love to hit 200. Uh, some we're averaging 200. Did it clear? Kobe's talking about this question on how many days for completion, not right. how much money you're at. It. You're oh, yeah, no, no, we're gonna figure I'm, I'm answering that one. Sorry about that. Great. <laughs> uh, I'll, get you, I'll get to Troy then. Um, okay, so this was the uh, Robin was asking about it. Robin, yeah. Um, so it, historically, it's about 15% of the total contract amount is what we have seen. So if, if a house is, you know, I'm going to help I'm gonna myself up, $400,000, um, it's going to be a, it being about four sixty is what we've seen that a lot of customers end up doing. Not all of them, um, but, but usually about 15, if a house is, if, if a total contract we see is about $460,000, 60,000 of that is, is stuff that customers have upgraded. Um, 400 would be typically the base. That's what historically, it's been that way for 20 years. Um, that I know of. So. Does that include like structural changes or are you talking just about finishes? No, pretty much, uh, pretty much extras and options. Um, okay. Pretty well. So it, it does change a little bit, I guess, depending on what structural changes you do, because some of them are, are mm -hmm. higher than others because they add significant footage, like in these, you know, the bonus room. 
right a different deal but um but yeah we can get you the prices for okay. sure all right and shortland is asking what's the base price for the canyon c so in fort bend county i think is what she's saying she is you're looking at about three hundred and seventy thousand for the base uh price so that'd be the one that don described originally you know the the three bedroom two and a half bath version um that that with the garage of course that's included mm -hmm. Uh, with the included kitchen and all that kind of get regular master bath, all that good stuff, but with our standard features too. So yeah. we're still getting granite um, countertops. We're getting, oh, go ahead. And do you have the upgraded kitchen in front of you since you already pulled it? But of course. course. But of, of course. course. Um, so alternate kitchen's about, it adds about uh, $12,000, 12200 mm -hmm. right in there. Um, and it actually adds also about 15 square feet um, of, of, of living area too. So it makes okay. it a lot bigger. And I'm going to insert our usual pricing disclaimer. It is January 17th, 2023. Um, so it is accurate today. That's right. Might, might not be as accurate in the future. So head to a sales office and go to a contract right now. <laughs> if you're ready, please don't sign if you're not ready. Uh, Wesley was asking what happened to elevation C because on my page of elevations, I left C off because C is actually the elevation for the model. So I was just using that page to show the, the alternate options. That's right. Um, and Alicia Sharon, we did the regular kitchen, but changed the island to this one, blue with white granite, Ooh. a good compromise. Very nice. All right, sounds good. Um, and then we have a question from YouTube. Will your team work with an interior designer? All right. So the, well, the good news is the price of working with us already includes um, three hours of time with a designer in our mm -hmm. design center. So you don't have to bring an interior designer. You're welcome to bring them with you. Um, the, the kicker will be that only the customer is allowed to make the decisions. So right. um, while we will help you guide you through like who signs on the, the dotted line, we've had this happen where they, oh, I want somebody desire to pick my colors. We can't do that. The customer must be present. Um, and by the way, that means husband and wife have to sign. So we're all clear. Mm -hmm. Most people have both part, any parties that are on the contract must sign the color selection and, and uh, options of them. And so you're welcome to bring someone with you if you want to, if you, if you trust their opinion, of course. Um, I will say the the fewer people you bring outside of who's engaged in the contract, the better. So if you just mm -hmm. bring you, your significant other, and a designer, that usually works just fine. And of course, again, we'll have a designer there. They can be as involved as you want them to be or 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 not. If you've got somebody that you trust there, they can just kind of walk you through, hey, here's what's included. Here's what's available. Let me know what you want. Um, but yeah, you're absolutely proven. Okay, awesome. Um, Jesse Sharon, she can't wait to cook in her kitchen. Um, yeah, it's going to be wonderful. I know you've been, you've been I, waiting I for a long time. So. That's going to be awesome, Jesse. I do have a bit of yeah. advice for for um, a friend asking about the, the designer. The, yes. So, and they didn't ask this. So this is, but this is just Eric's historical advice from having said it on many a color selection over the last twenty years. Um, I'll tell you some people not to bring with you. Um, <laughs> People, people whose, whose opinions you, you think you value as, for, as far as like life advice and things like that, but maybe not color advice. So let's avoid bringing like moms, sisters, sisters-in-law, mothers-in-law. Um, th these, these are folks maybe to avoid bringing. Uh, Don has, a, has a, a, a very colorful way of describing that with um, baby names and, and things yes. like that. So what is that, Don, your, your usual go-to? So, so my, my baby name advice, which also applies um, here, is you you only, before the baby is born, everybody thinks they're entitled to an opinion if you share your baby's name. So it is my advice that you do not tell people your, ba your baby's name until your baby is born, because then it's a lovely, lovely name for a child, and they don't tell you all the stories about their ex-girlfriends or ex-boyfriends or sister's cousins and, and ruin your baby name. Um, to be fair, there'll be that one aunt that will tell you no matter what, because she has no filter. <laughs> that's but true. That's not going to matter. You can't inoculate against it. She would that. probably also tell you if she thought your baby was ugly and we can't. <laughs> um, I, I would apply the same advice here. If you if you have a sister, mother, cousin, aunt, whatever, who you have similar design taste and you value their advice and you like how their home looks, bring them. If you would not ask them what to wear, don't bring them because they'll tell you and whatever you pick, if you don't agree with them, it's going to be a fight every Thanksgiving, every, every visit, every, everything. I told you, you should have blah, blah, blah. Just blame the builder. Say, Oh, I went with your choices, but I don't know what they did. I yeah. picked what you said. And then they told me to change it. I don't know. But I honestly, all kidding aside, I can't tell you how many times someone would bring mm -hmm. someone they loved with them. 
pick all this stuff out only to come back in two weeks and change it all. So just think about that. <laughs> Jesse has some great advice that I think she just gave um, on designing the house and choosing your wedding dress. Yes, very, very similar. Very similar wedding dress. Same thing. Everybody thinks they're entitled to an opinion ahead of time. Like just no, mm -hmm. no. small group, small group, Highly small group with similar taste. Yeah. <laughs> and Wendy says she's that aunt who will tell you. Oh, everything. nice. Of course. <laughs> Uh, yep. You hear about it. Uh, all right. Andrew is asking, is it possible to have Tilson build everything except the interior? I would like to do all the interior myself, cabinets, floorings, etc. Yeah, Andrew, at this time, we're not offering a, a shell and semi-finished solution. We did use, we, we did use, that, we used to do that once upon a time. <laughs> we used to uh, did. Yeah, he's back when Eric talked like that. That's when we did it. Um, we, we did kind of get away from it. It's it's virtually impossible to do if you're borrowing the money. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. if you're doing a loan or, or mortgage or anything like that. Um, it's not outside their own possibility. Obviously, if you're paying cash, it's just something that we haven't done in a number. Of, I'm not going to say we'll never do it again. Um, it would depend on where, obviously. And, it would, um, and you know, you would have to be paying cash uh, for it for us to consider it. So I'm not going to say it's not possible, but we'd have to have further discussions about that to, to be sure that everyone's crystal clear on what's included and what's specifically what's not included. But mm -hmm. we've done before. We've done shell and semi-finished. Okay. Um, Wendy, Sharon, she told Caleb it's okay if it takes a little longer because we don't want to move in the 100 to 1,000 degrees. <laughs> with you, Wendy. That's fair. Very so, like just so we're all clear, it's 80 degrees today in Texas. It's mid January. So who knows when Wendy will be moving in a comfortable time? Like, I don't know. But it'll be 39 tomorrow. So stand by. I know exactly. It's the only days it's not like that is the two days of freeze, and you don't want right. to move then either. Um, uh, Rick is asking, do you guys have a plan with a mother in law floor plan? We do. I, yeah, I think they uh they yep. have yeah, we can add it to any of our really any of ours. We have some that are pre designed. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, this mind, San Jacinto is a good one to look at too. Mind. Yeah, but we can do those in other plans. So. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then we have Saladin, move into Victoria soon, living in New Jersey and planning on selling current home. Can't wait to work with Tilson, watch you guys oh. every week. Oh, thank you. Oh, so nice. Um, and then Rick is saying, okay, that's great. We're going to be building in the near future. Do you build in Grimes County? Yes, we do. Oh, yes. We certainly build in Grimes County. Um, and Janet saying, take lots of pictures when you've made your selection so you can remember what you picked. Very good advice. Um, and then Rick, is it possible to get a rough estimated cost for a three bedroom, two and a half bath, three car garage with a mother-in-law plan? Um, it's possible to get a rough estimate. Uh, but uh, what I'd recommend is reaching out to one of our design centers, um, probably mm -hmm. either one in Spring or in Bryan. Both of those build in. Grimes County all the time, but you're looking about uh, the one I'm looking at is bigger than three bedroom. It's probably more like a four or five bedroom, but it's the San Jacinto. You're looking about 500, somewhere between 475 and 525 is going to get you pretty close. Um, okay. And, that, and I, I'm assuming that the three bedrooms does not include the mother-in-law suite. In other words, I'm adding that onto the three bedroom. So I'm guessing you want three bedrooms plus mother-in-law suite, but the, the San Jacinto, um, with at least an oversized two-car garage and the mother-in-law suite in Grimes County is about 500,000. Okay, sounds good. And it's tit Rick Titanium Jenkins. That's a, man. <laughs> and Alicia is also pointing out that our all of our pricing is on our website. Um, so if you just pull, pick the county, it's gonna populate in all those prices. So you can kind of narrow down your choices and figure out where you wanna be. So thank you, Alicia. That's good advice. Award-winning website, might I add. <laughs> Can y'all tell Eric likes awards? He likes trophies. Well, it's all Don's awards. I just, I just take credit for it. <laughs> all righty. Well, let's take a look at this master suite. Yeah, guys, keep asking your questions. Keep dropping the questions into the chat. We love these questions. Anything you want to know, design, land, site preparation, customization. We'll help you as much as we can. All right. 
One of the greatest features of the Canyon model home and the design that we did is for a 2,300 square foot home, for the owner's retreat to have its own private space is very, very unique, but it truly doesn't share any walls with any of the other rooms. So three of its walls are to the outside, the covered living space and the outdoors where it has beautiful windows, and the only wall it does share is with its own bathroom. So you're truly on your own retreat that's away from everyone it's for a long day of working outside or just a long day of work. As you walk into the master suite, you're gonna notice we've opted for a big, beautiful cathedral ceiling and an accent wall to the back that really makes the room feel voluminous. But no matter how you do it, it's gonna be a great place to retreat. So private to the master suite is gonna be the master bath. The way we've gone with it, which is in the stock plan, is just one large shower that's really beautiful. It makes a great accent piece, but it's very useful as well. You could also opt to have a large tub, separate shower, or there's a couple of other options you can do on the master suite. There you go. One All of my right. favorite master bedrooms in our entire portfolio. Mm -hmm. It's it's jam up again because of the location. It reminds me a lot of our old our Bridgeport uh, we used to have, where it, like three sides of it were just the outside. It was awesome. Yeah, well, and I just love, I think this was done so well too. I love the that we went with the cathedral ceiling, and I love the accent mm -hmm. um, wall that we've got going. But yeah, just a great great suite as well. Just gorgeous. So love all of that. And then this is the included uh, layout um, on the plan. The standard is, you know, we have usually when we run our poll here, it's about 50-50. So go ahead and, and place your votes. Do you want a, a bathtub in your master or no? Um, which which side you're on? So this is one that we, we have designed to be standard without the bathtub, um, but there is the option. And I've got that on the next slide. If you did want to put that bathtub in there, you can do the alternate master bath, um, which just makes the shower smaller and, and sticks the bathtub in that space, basically. <coughs> yep. So you, you can, either way, we've, we've got you covered um, with that, with the master suite. Oh, uh, Wes, right. Wes is coming in already, no tubs. Yes, yeah, let's check again. Um, yep, we got Wes saying no tubs. Um, and then right, Rick's explaining the titanium, he's- Yeah, Rick explained his titanium, he's got titanium in his back. <laughs> I told you he's tough. Yeah. Uh, and then we got Glenn saying he's enjoying his propane heat range and fireplace in the Livingston B in Henderson County. <laughs> nice. That's right. That's nice. And then Jesse's asking if we know how much the accent wall is. Oh, you asked Jesse. I was looking frantically and I don't I don't have it at my fingertips. So I, I feel like a miserable failure. I am gonna I have I'm gonna reach out to the uh, the Brian team. Um, they would, if anyone knew quickly, it'd probably be yeah. them. So I'm going to see if I can get them, um, without completely derailing the show. Um, All right. I'll find out about it, but go ahead. All right. Rick is saying we're going to be paying cash when we build. How does that process work? Is there a half down to start and the other half when it's finished? What's average construction time? All right. So the way it works on a cash transaction is there are actually six payments. Um, and it works on what would ordinarily be known as a draw schedule so that there's a discount for cash because effectively we'll be using your money to fund the construction of the home as opposed to ours so we automatically give you a discount for cash there also is no closing costs when you when you do cash because there's no title company involved or mortgage loan origination fees or appraisals or all that kind of stuff um so the way it works is we, it's um 35 percent down at this right before we start construction so we do the whole process we we'll still take the same three thousand dollar deposit up front and then once we're ready to start construction, we take um, a 35% down at that point in time before we start, we take 35%. And then it's 15% at different intervals. So like another 15% after the slab is placed, um, for instance, another 15% after the house is dried in, um, another 15% at sheetrock stage, um, another 15% at final trim or cabinets basically and then the last five percent we don't get until you've done your walkthrough and we've completed the punch list and you are prepared to move in then we get that last five percent right before you move in so 35 15 15 15 15 5 i think i got i think that adds up to 100 if it doesn't i missed something all right um and wes is sharing that paying cash was very easy um i would say except for the part where you get all the cash <laughs> it's a little bit more difficult. Well, put, paying cash out is super easy. It's 
<laughs> getting the cash to start with a little yeah. bit more difficult. The smart saving is the is the tougher. But part. I, I want to be like like Wes and Rick when I grow up. I want to be able to pay cash for yeah. for a house. Um, we also have Wendy voting no tubs. Tubs are icky. Um, we got Jesse saying we went back and forth on the tub of the master, but eventually chose shower only. I don't think you're going to regret it. I don't. Well, you, you've still got the tub in the other bathroom if you ever if you ever need that for whatever reason. So. And then we got Robin asking a couple of insulation questions. Can you do two by six walls for additional insulation? And can you do a mix of closed cell spray foam for air sealing along with bat insulation? Great question, Robin. Look at you go. So, um, all right. So yes, you can do two by six. Oh, I forgot to ask you the average. Anyway, so you, you, can, you can do two by six walls uh, for more insulation. You, you'd be going from like an R15 to an R21 um, if you did bats. Now, I will tell you that you're probably going to get more bang for your buck. Um, well, Jessica all over it. I'll get that in a minute. Um, you get more bang for your buck, uh, honestly, doing the spray foam. Um, and which, by the way, we're going to be doing standard in North Texas, which I believe you said you're in Alito. I don't know if you're going to stay in the area. Probably so. People who moved to Parker County love Parker County. So um, what we do, we don't do closed cell spray foam. That, that's a very popular in a commercial application. It is not a idea in a residential application um, and the reason why is because of moisture so we do an open cell spray foam and in, in the north texas counties where you are it's going to be standard on all the homes that we do so we're going to do spray foam on, and it's not a combination with the bat it's going to be spray foam in the attic and spray foam in the walls um, and so you are that which seals up the house you're actually not mm -hmm. getting more r value in fact you're getting less but what you're really paying for, what you're really trying to combat in Texas is losing the heat, that losing the air that you're paying to heat and mostly cool. To cool, um, yeah. We can all agree that in, in where we live, if you are anywhere between the Rio Grande and the Red River, if you're in Texas, you are running your AC during the year more than you are running your furnace or, or uh, heat, heat pump. So we're more concerned with, are we losing the air that we're cooling to the outside? How do we combat that? Well, sealing up the house is the best way. So we already do a really good job of sealing it in Climate Zone 2, which is where we do use bats and blown. Um, we, have to, we have to pass less than five air changes per hour, which we're hitting every time. You move it to Climate Zone 3, which is where you're talking about, up in the Alito area. Um, and then we have to do less than three air changes per hour. So the house has to be even tighter. And in doing so, that's that's what's going to make the big difference on your energy bill. Not so. I mean, we'll, I'll be glad to upgrade the two to six walls if you want to. You would be better served to just use our ordinary spray foam. You're going to be fine. Um, mm -hmm. Don't need to give up that space because what you're effectively doing is you're giving up two inches in all of your exterior rooms um, that you don't need to do because we're already doing a full OSB wrap, which adds to the structural stability. Uh, we do two to four walls on sixteen inch centers, so they're structurally you're not getting anything which is not what you asked about so uh, I, I appreciate that but uh if you were all if your option was only bats up in that area yeah i, I might recommend going from an r15 to an r21 wall but when we're doing spray foam like we're going to be doing there you're good spray foam the whole house do a dehumidifier mm -hmm. it's going to be fantastic energy bills okay um alicia is asking what is the cash discount Great question, Alicia. Okay, so there's already a there's a two percent discount on the base price of the home automatically right off the top, and that's that's the immediate cost savings. And again, because we're using your money instead of ours to build the home, because um, you're you're funding it along the way, so we feel like it's fair fair to do that. Um, the other savings, so that, that's already you know, on on five hundred thousand dollars, that's ten thousand dollars immediately, which will pay for your septic system, by the way, or water well or something like that. Um, and then on top of that, though, you also don't have any closing costs, which typically average about three and a half percent of the cost of a home. So those are different fees charged by title companies, mortgage companies. None of it goes to the builder. It's appraisals, it's surveys, it's um, document fees, recording fees, 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 fees. So everything uh, you pay for the privilege of owing them money. Yeah. Right. So that, that same $500,000 house, that's another 15, 16,000 bucks. Um, that, that you're talking about that you're saving. So it's more than just the 2% discount that we offer, which is already a good deal. But um, the, the 
closing cost is a significant amount of money that sometimes is lost on folks who don't have the cash discount. So mm -hmm. we don't advertise it as a discount because it's not money that we're surrendering to you because we, we don't we don't get any of that closing cost money. Right. But it is real savings. Okay. All right. And then Rick is asking the average construction time, what it's like yeah, in months. Construction you missed that part time of right now is, is about nine to nine to ten months average construction time. Uh, that's mm -hmm. after we've done all the paperwork portion up front, the design, the engineering, permitting, um, color selection, soil tests, um, all that kind of good stuff. Drafting, ACE, architecture control committee approval. Those things happen. Utilities. Yeah, which are about three to five, sometimes six months. And then nine or so months of actual construction, nine to ten months. Okay. Perfect. Um, Janet's also voting no tub, bigger shower. Um, Gina says no tub, so we are uh, we are unanimous no tub on this one. So far. Uh, Wes is sharing he must have spray foam because he loves his igloo, igloo attic. Yep. Um, and then we've got Will checking out for the day. Y'all have a safe and blessed week. Bye, Will. Have fun on the farm. You will. Get to work, buddy. Um, and Robin is appreciative. Good to hear about the OSB wrap. Lots of builders are using other wrap sheathing that are not a structural. Yeah, that's good. Robin, it's important to know that that's actually only required in windstorm counties. So counties that border the Gulf mm -hmm. of Mexico where you could ordinarily in, in, uh, encounter a hurricane. Or I guess a hurricane encounters you. Anyway, nonetheless. So in <laughs> counties that border the Gulf of Mexico, it's required. Obviously, we, we, we were born in Houston, right? So our roots mm -hmm. are in that Houston Gulf Coast area. And so we're kind of like pretty serious about the, the structural stability zones when building down there since before the windstorm even existed. Um, and, and so we kind of take some of those practices and like, hey, this will work well in other places too. Um, makes a cleaner application for like on this home, the hardy plank on the canyon, makes a much, much cleaner application on that as opposed to just using felt paper or T-ply or some of the other mm -hmm. things that, again, they're allowed by code to be used. We're just not big fans of the, of the final product. It just feels better to see actual like planks. Wood. Yeah. Wood. <laughs> like a real thing, not... <laughs> What's behind the paper? <laughs> uh, we got Ashley voting for a tub. Must have a tub, a hot bath, and a book is my self care. Oh, there we go. Okay. So, hey, I'm in favor if you use it. I I never I never use it, so it just ends up collecting dust, which is why I'm not I'm not a fan. But yeah. And going back to the question, uh, Jesse had a question about the accent wall. Oh Jessica, yes. Yeah, Jessica was kind of to answer quickly. Um, okay. So it's about nine dollars a square foot. So on that particular. On the, the one that we're looking at there, it's about eleven hundred. Actually, one thousand one hundred thirty-one dollars and forty-eight cents for that exact wall. <laughs> uh, so, thank you, Jessica. Shout out to Jessica in, at our Brian Design Center for being nice. on standby and helping me out. I appreciate that. All right, uh, Beatrice is asking: Do the electric propane fireplaces produce heat, or are they just for aesthetics? Okay, so we we talked about two things. So, there's electric fireplace and there's propane fireplace. Um, electric fire—they're not the same. Those mm -hmm. are two different fireplaces. So the electric fireplace, uh, which is kind of like the the picture of it, it's a, but it does actually it can produce heat. It doesn't have to produce heat. There's a setting on there that you can um, hit it to produce heat. Um, it's not a lot of heat, right? But it is it, it is warm. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of warms the soul, if you will. Um, and then, but if you're talking about doing a propane fireplace, which would be an actual gas fireplace, um, whether it's natural gas or propane, it's going to look the same. But uh, most of our customers will be propane. They don't have natural gas available. Uh, so mm -hmm. we do propane, and that one does put out a little bit more heat. So it's truly a gas. I mean, there's a blue and red flame inside the firebox, and it is putting off heat um, through glass. So it, it's going to be a little bit. But yes, they do. And But I will say, in both of those cases, and including the wood-burning fireplaces that we do, mm -hmm. they're all for aesthetics, guys. None of right. these fireplaces are going to heat your home. None of them are going to run you out of the like. The, the homes are built super, super tight these days, which you're paying us a lot of good hard-earned money for to build your home super tight, super energy efficient. We're in Texas. Our biggest concern is how do we keep the cool air in the you know 10 months out of the year that we're running the AC? Not, oh my gosh, how do I save money on my heating bill the two months mm -hmm. out of the year? My heater. Uh, and by the way, when I say two months, I'm talking about all eight weeks combined over a 12 month period. Like nobody, <laughs> has, we don't have two months of winter in Texas. They, the Amarillo, Panhandle, Dalhart, those guys do. We do not. In, in, in the Republic of Tilson, where we build, that's not a thing. So um, just go in with that expectation, be it yeah. just and others. It is for aesthetics. 
yeah, it's going to be like, it's going to be hot. Don't touch it. Yeah. But you're not, you're probably not going to turn the heat completely off and heat your Ever. home with, yeah. with any of our fireplaces, including the wood burning ones. Like it's just yeah. not able to be done now. And so Rick is saying, thanks for the live video chat. It was very informative. A lot of questions I had were asked were answered. So I look forward to doing business with you guys in the near future. I'll be using Tilson Homes. Thank you guys and have a great day. Awesome. Thanks, well, thank Rick. you, Rick. We're chatting time. It's not to end here. So yeah. we got other places you can hit us yeah. up for. And then Jesse's saying, I'm being nosy <coughs> after texture. How much longer till close? AKA, what's our timeline looking at now? I, I try to do it more by cabinets, uh, Jesse. So the uh, I'm, I'm more of a... Once the cabinets go in, um, we're shooting for the 75 to 90 days out. In some cases, 60 days out depends on the size of the home. I think you're building a larger home. So um, we'd be closer to that 75 to 90 day mark. Uh, but that's mm -hmm. after the cabinets go in. Um, give us another probably mm, three, three to four weeks, depending on cabinet installation and paint and uh, add all that to the after texture. Because you texture next and then... Um, depending on the painter, cabinet schedule, paint, cabinets, countertops, all that kind of good stuff, and then off to the races. But I'm, 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 I, we shoot for 60 days after cabinets are installed. That's what really our goal is. In a lot of cases, it's 75 to 90, but working on that. Okay, awesome. Our friend from Florida is asking if it's really that hot in Texas, hotter than Florida. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it is. Human. It's we, it, we have all we have a very similar climate, my friend. Um, Alicia says yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the difference would be like if you get up into North Texas, where a friend Robin is, you know, once you get above about really Buffalo, that kind of area, Corsicana, it, it is a little bit different climate. It gets much colder than it does in Florida. It gets every bit as hot as it does in Florida, but it gets much, much colder. They have larger temperature swings over mm -hmm. the year. Um, but yeah, I mean, you're talking about Houston and Tampa, same, only Tampa's pretty. That's the only difference. Like, <laughs> y'all have access to blue water and beautiful beaches. We do not have that. Um, we, we, go. We, have, we have highways. We have lots of highways. We have Bucky's. They have that too now. Um, but yeah, we either, I'll put it to you this way if I want to get to a, a beautiful beach with decent, pretty water, I'm driving eight or nine hours either way. I'm either driving to South Padre Island, and I'm still in Texas, or I'm driving to Florida to the Panhandle floor. <laughs> like, those are my options. Nothing in between. Well, I think it's a and universal you, rule. Like you're not supposed to go to the beach in the state you're from. Like it's just. Well, no problem. <laughs> All right. We've got Charlene asking um, how much more for a wood burning fireplace. It really depends, Troylin. Um, I know you said you're in the, <coughs> excuse me, the Fort Bend County area. I used to tell people to budget between 6,000 and 15,000 because I don't know how you're going to want it finished if you want stone or brick, you know, full stone, full brick or whatever, or just the, the wood burning fire box with a tile surround or a brick or stone surround. Um, and there's different levels of and sizes of wood burning fireplaces. So, you know, and we, of course, we, we can help you with those in our design centers. We have pictures of them. Um, but somewhere between the $6,000 and $15,000 range. I know that's a big range, but there's a lot mm -hmm. of different fireplaces. Yeah. Um, Ashley's asking if we have an ETA for the Polyduro model, uh, needing to plan our next trip to Texas and would love to see the Polyduro not on a computer screen. Me too. Yeah, Me too. yeah. We are we are sh really shooting for the end of the year. It's going to be really tight. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll see because no doubt there's going to be some changes that are made. But we will have more info on that as it progresses because Don's going to, I guarantee you get some marketing mileage out of that thing. No doubt. Yes, about it. absolutely. Um, Alicia's saying you forgot one of the, the pros of Houston, the oil smell. It's an so unforgettable pretty. experience. I'm sorry. To me, that sounds like the smell of employment and uh, <laughs> low cost of living. But you're right. It smells different ways to different people. Um, Look, there's smells in Florida, too. There's some paper <laughs> mills. There's some swamps. It's, you know. uh, that's funny. Um, Jesse's saying, thank you. My six foot four inch husband is ready to be able to change wow. comfortably. RV living has been an experience. Uh, <laughs> Poor guy punches the ceiling every morning. Oh. I can empathize. Um, and then we got Beatrice asking, when you meet our super, does that mean we are about to break ground? Our date for release is February 6th. Yes, that's definitely what that means. Yep, absolutely. Yep. And, and and your builder will have a, a much better time frame on exactly when uh, he or she's going to get started. So absolutely. All right, awesome. Well, let's get back to the canyons. Everybody can see it if they haven't already. And Keep we'll asking your questions. We're going to answer them, but we're going to get through this for the folks to be respectful of their time. Mm-hmm. All Not right, dogs, let's do the whatever. patterns and studies. Yeah, we'll just hang out for the rest of the day. We're fine. But. 
Canyon design is unique in that it is split, but it's split front to back. So the master space is at the back of the home and the other bedrooms are at the front of the home, but none of them share any common walls with each other, which is a great design detail that our design drafting team was able to put together. The spare bedrooms in the stock plan share a regular bathroom that you can walk into, plenty of space. We've opted for a Jack and Jill style bathroom, which has a little bit more space to the home, but is a great, great use of space for maybe a brother and sister or two siblings sharing a space, or if you have guests staying a long time, especially that front bedroom, which is 13 by 17 feet. One of the unique details when you walk into the Canyon model home, you're gonna see we have the front study space set up as exactly that, as a home office. With so many people working from home these days or kids doing remote learning, we thought it was really important to have a space dedicated to that. The great thing about the space is it enjoys beautiful views off that front porch where you can look out onto your property and kind of remember what you're working for. Yeah, nice, nice big bedroom there. Good, good space for everybody. And I really, I love having the study included in there as an additional room. So you're not repurposing uh, a yeah. bedroom to try to do that and, and making up the space and good having it, you know, at the front of the house kind of set off um, from everything. So you're away from, from a lot of the noise. So it's very good. Um, let's see, we, we actually scared Troylin out of getting a fireplace. So she says, never mind. <laughs> well, I'm not here to do that. Just. Real talk. I promise you transparency. Yeah, yeah I mean, they're, they're beautiful focal points um, in a home. We just want to make sure that we're setting expectations that you're not putting one in for for the purpose of heat because it's just not gonna not gonna do it. Um, let's see. Robin is asking if we can go over all the air sealing features that Tilson uses. Uh, I won't go over all of them, but I'll I will go over most of them. So, um, in in we really it starts from the ground up literally. So we're using a sill seal. So which is a kind of a foam um, gasket between the first toe plate, the first board that we lay on the foundation that is bolted down to the frame. So the kind of your first gasket there, we're going to seal up at all exterior penetrations of any kind. So any of your outlets where the AC comes into the house, where electrical comes into the house, water line comes into the house, the dryer vent goes out of the house. I mean, at truly every single penetration is completely sealed up that's also the same on um fixtures so like air registers wall outlets i mean anything like that is going to be sealed because air can actually get in there and come down where the electrical wires come and cold air blow in out there um it, it, again it, it varies by the climate zone a little bit robin so i don't want to leave anything out already blanketed enough to cover all that obviously in mm -hmm. climate zone three we are spray foaming the entire house so there is zero there's no ridge venting. There's no pre-drill ventilated soffit. There's no ventilation in there, which is why we have a front, no matter where we build, climate zone two or three, we're having fresh air intakes uh, to bring fresh air into the home. Make sure you have enough fresh air coming into the house um, because we've gone in, there's so few air changes per hour now in the homes that are built these days. The The other thing is you're going to be, we're going to be submitting tests throughout the process. So you got a duct blaster test where we actually test the leakage on your AC ducts. Um, so from the return air, so the plenum, uh, all the way out to the to the supplies. Um, there's return airs in every single bedroom, uh, really every room that can be sealed off. So bedrooms and, and studies, not your pantries, bathrooms, closets, that kind of stuff, but bedrooms and studies. Uh, there's return airs in addition to the big return air in the hallway. That's for pressure balancing and temperature balancing throughout the house. Um, we're also going to be doing a blower door test uh, closer towards the end of construction where we literally take the front door off of the house. They put a big kind of a tent looking thing on the front of it. Um, and, and yeah, there's energy efficiency video they can watch. Uh, but but we truly are testing how many air changes per hour, how much leakage is around the windows, around the exterior doors, any corners of the home, anywhere there's a beam that we may have not sealed it up properly. Um, if it doesn't pass that test, they have little thermal guns they can use to show us where it's failing. We go out there, reseal it up, retest it, and move on down the road. We do that on every home that we build, no matter what. Even if it's out in an uncorporated area of the county where there's not a building inspector, we're still mm -hmm. having third party inspections done throughout the process um, for our peace of mind and yours. So yeah. that's, a, that's a great, great And question. as Eric was commenting, I dropped, I dropped a link um, into both Facebook and YouTube. Uh, that'll take you directly oh. to our energy efficiency videos and articles and also has links to the rest of our construction process as well. So we try to be very transparent about how we're, how we're building our homes and why. 
Yeah, I think Beatrice had a question about about inspectors. Yeah, Beatrice had has a question about inspections of are we able to pay for independent inspectors during different phases of the build, like after framing and at the end? Um, All right, Beatrice. Yes, ma'am. You can pay for whatever you want Mm -hmm. to. Um, Here, here's what I will say about that. And and by the way, another set of eyes never hurts our feelings. Um, Now we're already going to have third party inspections done. We don't own the company. We don't have an affiliation with them, other than we're hiring them to inspect it. And if they find stuff, they tell us, and we have to go fix it. Uh, right. We're humans. If you hire someone to go out and do an inspection, um, it's kind of like hiring a lawyer. They're going to have to do something to justify the cost. It's their yeah. job to find something wrong. Their job to find something. Um, yeah. Now, if it truly is a code matter, like we built something that's technically not to code, that's that we're, we're going to fix that, of course. Mm-hmm. If it comes down to an interpretation of the code, there are the building code has two types of compliance. There is there is prescriptive, which is a thou shalt, you know, thou shalt have a stud every X many inches. That's easy. And there's also performance based, which is as long as the outcome is less than five air changes per hour, it passes code. Now, those can be interpreted by different inspectors to say, well, I prefer to see this, 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 this. Those things right. will fix. If it is a performance standard that we are meeting, we're meeting the performance standard. Uh, but prescriptive things, we will meet. Um, and if they find something that, so I, I want to tell you that I'm not saying we're going to be doing stuff against code. What I'm saying is you could put, I could line six inspectors up to go through a house and come back with six different lists of what needs to be fixed. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're all right. And you could argue with all of them. So anyway, I hope that I hope that's transparent enough for you that I, I, they're going to find something because they're going to send you a bill. <laughs> so they, you would you would be like if you went out there and you paid them four hundred fifty or five hundred dollars to inspect your home and they're like, "Yep, everything's fine. Pay up. Here's my Venmo." You'd be like, "Really? That's weird." <laughs> so anyway, just with a grain of salt, take that and then obviously sit down with your building superintendent with the inspection that they give you mm-hmm. and go through it. And if it's something that's prescriptive based, uh, we're going to fix it. If it's performance based, we're probably not. Okay. All right. And then Ashley has another Paladero question. Sure. If we go with the extended kitchen option online, can we still get the vaulted ceiling going long ways from kitchen to over family room? Over Oof, to the family I, room. I don't have it in front of me, unfortunately, Ashley. That might be something we have to ask the uh the local design center there in san marcus or your or a sales center um trying to look so I, I, have, I have disciplined myself to be as intimately familiar with that plan as i should be so that is on me well i tell you what i will look that up i'll see if i can figure it out or if we need to send you to san marcus while we take a look at the drop zone garage and bonus room on the canyon yeah. Located conveniently off the kitchen and breakfast room, you're gonna notice that we've got a mud room, kind of a drop zone area, utility room, and half bath. So the stock plan does come with a half bath utility room. We've opted for a side load garage, which is what changes that area into having that drop zone, which is a great space for your backpacks, your muddy boots. You still have plenty of room in the utility room for washer, dryer, and stand up freezer. We opted to do one more thing on the model home here, and that was for the bonus room upstairs above the family. So it adds about 445 square feet of living area. So this home in total is a little over 2,800 square feet on the model. But the great thing is it's a great space upstairs for kids or grandkids to go up there and hang out. You can watch the ball game, they can play the video games, or just a nice place that can be used as a flex area, maybe a sewing room, maybe a crafting room, anything like that you wanna do, you have plenty of space up there to do that. It's nearly the exact same size as the family room below. All right. Indeed it is. Um, I've got the picture still pulled up, but I don't know if you're, maybe the service is not working or. Oh, sorry. Or maybe I just thought that they were there. (laughs) You want to show any of these or not? We weren't getting a lot of questions about the canyon, so I just sort of. But yeah, um, so that we, sh- we showed earlier, uh, the Jack and Jill bathroom. Um, so that's what we did in the model. We also do have the photos um, here of what the um, regular bathroom looks like if you opt to not do the Jack and Jill um, version. It's just a you know kind of your standard hallway bath. Um, still, still very nice, got the laundry hamper. Um, there are, you know, the, you see the study and the two bedrooms there. 
Um, so very nice. We oh, already did. <laughs> Um, so this is your utility room, your drop zone, and the powder room um, area that you have. So it's very, very nice. And I love the floor in that, yeah. that utility room. It's just, it's Cute so tile. nice. We have some new tiles that we just got, a new tile program just got rolled out. So mm -hmm. um, it, which is usually code for, this is what's available now. Um, <laughs> yeah, generally. <laughs> um, and then that bonus space that just adds, adds so much space. Um, and, and the bathroom in the powder room that was actually discontinued by the time we opened the model because that's just how it how it goes um, with tile availability a lot of times. Um, but yeah, I just love that space. So very good. All righty. And let's see if I figured out what Ash so Ashley wanted to know if we go with the extended. It's yeah. it's gonna be we would probably need to send that out for engineering. I'm not gonna say that it can't be done. Mm -hmm. uh, but that that is a long, long open span. Uh, it might be over 40 feet, in fact. Uh, I didn't pull the scale plans up to look at it, but just adding up real quick, the family room, the dining room, what the kitchen would be. Um, I would probably give my brother Chris hives if I said, yeah, no problem. So I'm going yeah. to, um, I'm gonna punt and say that we could probably have that done. It would certainly have to be sent out for engineering. Mm -hmm. um, if it, we wouldn't be able to price it um, using the custom option price that they have in the sales centers, it would need, we would have to send that out to um, one of our vendors um, yeah. to make sure we could do an engineered wood product with some of an engineered beam. And if not, we would need to see if we need to be done with some kind of structural steel, which is a whole yeah. other problem. Yeah, because I'm trying to look at it on the work copy and it'll physically let me select both things, but the beam definitely stops where the original kitchen stops. Right. So I'm thinking that's a we're 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 gonna need to we need to do some more research for you. Yeah. Um Alicia is asking when building, do you use local crews or do tils, til, or like Tilson crews, uh, electricians, plumbers, mill workers, et cetera, travel from site to site? Okay, so our those trades are independent contractors, so they're not Tilson employees. The superintendent that's overseeing your job is a Tilson full time Tilson employee, Tilson benefits, Tilson vehicle, Tilson iPad, Tilson phone, um, all that kind of good stuff. The but the crews, the actual electricians, plumbers, framers, trim carpenters, that kind of stuff, they they are independent contractors. Now, a lot of them are local to an area. And then in some cases, we are paying them to travel. We pay people that we know the quality of their work and, and expect the consistency. We're paying them travel, um, depending on where it is in the state. The We have a lot fewer like HVAC electrical and plumbing contractors because they usually can cover a larger area. They're bigger companies. Um, not, all, not in all cases, but in most cases, they're larger. They have multiple crews that work for them. Um, but then we have multiple framers, um, you know, trim carpenters, roofers, sheet rockers, painters, that kind of stuff. Um, those are, but they're all independent contractors, but they, we account for a significant amount of their work, not a hundred percent of their work, but a lot. Um, and they, we tend to get some priority treatment because of that. And, and not just we, a lot of their work, they know they're going to be, they get paid quickly. We, we don't jack them around for their money, which is a really important thing on the contractor side that we don't talk about a lot here, actually. Yeah. Um, but we don't we don't jerk them around for their money. A lot of builders do. Um, they get paid every week. They get paid more frequently than Don and I get paid. They get paid every week um, for the work that they do the week prior. As long as they have their time turned in, they're going to get. If they get their time turned in on Tuesday. They're getting paid on Friday. Period. Um, right. That that and they know that there's work behind whatever they're doing now. In other words, this isn't the one and only house you're going to be doing. They have you know six or eight lined up, and so it's a steady income, which is a big deal when you're an independent contractor. Do, do I have work after this, or do I need to be going out and looking for work after I finish this? So, great yeah. question. Yeah, uh, Beatrice is thanking us for asking all of her questions. Truly appreciate it. Well, thank you. We appreciate you watching. Yeah. Uh, Wendy is sharing as an agent. She typically uh, recommends that clients with new builds have an inspector come out a few months before the end of the warranty to give time to have those items fixed while still under warranty. This also gives you time to notice if there are any items that need attention that you may have missed because you've, you've been living in the house for a while. You can do that. And again, I don't, we don't have a problem with the inspector coming out before before closing. We've had them do that. but um, And yeah, I, I totally agree with the giving the house time to settle because that's going to happen. Um, yes. A lot of the little sheetrock cracks and, and paint touch-up separations and that kind of stuff, like indoor casing and things like that, the corners of the trim, that's going to happen in the first, as the house climatizes, so as that air, air conditioner is running and extracting the moisture out of the wood and things like that, you're going to get some separations, some little surface cracks, totally normal. 
Um, and, and yeah, it, it's stuff that you, you're going to see stuff in there, you know, when you're laying in bed at, mm -hmm. <laughs> at a different time of the year, uh, that you didn't see on your walkthrough because you didn't have a bed in there ideally. And you probably weren't laying down on the floor because that would be awkward for our building superintendent. So um, that would be weird. <laughs> it would be weird, but I mean, there's merit to it. So, uh, <laughs> tell the story often when I built my house in 2004, um, we, we didn't have kids at the time. And so <laughs> it was like three months after moving in, I went back all the way down to the secondary bathroom, just like, Hey, at some point, somebody should take a shower down here just to keep water flowing through the house and into the P traps, all that kind of good stuff. And went in there and closed the door to that bathroom. And the back of that door had never been painted. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> It was no big deal. I called Tommy at the time, my building superintendent, and we got warranty out there. We painted the backside of the door. But I mean, it's just one of those things. Like, I didn't catch it. He didn't catch it. We lived there for three months, didn't catch it. So, um, you know, every single one of our customers just ran into all their bathrooms. To my <laughs> bathroom. Hey, kids. But I, I say that I didn't know, as if, as if my kids would have noticed and said something. They would not. Not a chance. They would have just thought that's how bathroom doors were. That's how bathrooms were. I have a two tone bathroom door. Congratulations. Yes. Absolutely. Um, and Ashley's saying, I'm on her Polydor question. Got it. As long as I can get it done in the house, I'm willing to take whatever steps. <laughs> we, if it can be done. We if it can be done. We're not promising it can be done. <laughs> Don't go say Don and Eric said I could do it. No. Um, all right. Well, real quick, let's look at the outdoor living space and, and see a little bit more of the options on the canyon. Okay. So one of the most important things for our customers living on their rural property is the outdoors. That's why they bought the land to begin with. We took that into consideration on this model home and the outdoor living space that we have set up on the canyon design is spectacular. So it's immediately located off the family room. You have beautiful views through fixed glass windows out to it. It's plenty large enough at 19 feet wide and nearly nine feet deep to have two separate sitting areas and you can extend it beyond that if you're interested in doing so. Just like all of our designs in our portfolio, we have lots of custom options designed for this Canyon model. So we've opted to put a few of them here in the model home, like the Jack and Jill bath, the side load garage. But what you could also do, there's dozens of others that you could do. So there's a fourth bedroom option, there's a guest bedroom option, there's separate garage options, there's different kitchen options, ceiling treatment options, just really the possibilities are endless. But the best thing is those designs are already pre-done, pre-priced, ready to go, and we know that they work well with the space that's allowed for them. All right. And yeah, just a gorgeous, gorgeous back area there, just a rear Very porch. Fun. And then I think it was so smart to add the additional um, uncovered porch space to just have even more entertaining area for, for all the entertaining we do with the model. A lot of entertaining. <laughs> Lots of entertaining. All right. And so we'll, we'll, we'll do last call for questions. Did you see one more that came in? So we can, we can answer that for our Florida friend. Here in Florida, we have alligators. What do you guys have in Texas? Lions? <laughs> we actually also have alligators. Um, here. In fact, we have an alligator season to the month of June. You can mm -hmm. actually bag and tag one alligator per person. Um, so, yeah, we have alligators. Um, and, and other than that, we have... No, no lions, I know, at least not native ones. Um, no lions, tigers. Some of the over, zoo, I don't think they've escaped yet. <laughs> there are tigers on some of our job sites, I think, because of how some of the stuff gets mauled from time to time. But mm -hmm. uh, no, it's it's uh, mainly uh, hogs, lots and lots of large feral hogs. The wildlife is pretty similar to, um, to Florida. We're, we're pretty same across the southeast. Um, as you get west, you, get, you can run into mule deer, elk, um, that kind of cool stuff out there. Um, but yeah, we have gators. That's the thing. And, and just like you, we have saltwater and freshwater, uh, crocodiles and alligators. So, Oh, wow. Yeah. Good times. Um, Alicia Sharon, we extended the back porch out to six feet from the master with an added glass door between the windows. It goes all the mm -hmm. way down the original starting line at the living room. Oh, Cannot cool. wait. Awesome. That, that sounds be great. That'd be pretty. Um, Robin is asking, can you build a pool at the same time the house is being built or at least work with the pool contractor to make it easier to connect the plumbing and electrical items? All right, Robin, that's a great question. We're, we're probably getting back to closer to being able to do that. We had put a hiatus on that because of the long lead times that was taking pool contractors to get their mm -hmm. stuff together. Maybe, but hopefully by the time you're ready to do it, we, we'll be able to add that um, program back in. 
Um, but yeah, the answer is historically we we have these last year and a half, two years, we had to stop that simply because we had pool construction that was holding up our home closing, which is a problem for us. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can't be sitting there waiting on a pool to be finished while to, to for, in order for us to get paid for the home that we built. And that's what was happening on on not right. just pools, but also large metal buildings. Um, so but, the mortgage but we'll lender doesn't want to close when there's big unfinished projects. Like that's right. Pool. Yeah, the more even if you're not financing the pool, for instance, but mm -hmm. still. It, they, they want that to be done. Um, but we're getting, we're getting uh, back to where we're going to be able to do those things for sure on the, on the metal buildings. We're getting back towards that. Uh, pools will probably come shortly thereafter. We'll just have to have a real, real tight timeline on the pool contractor. Um, definitely in all cases we can set up for, and it's mainly electrical, the plumbing that have to be a whole lot. And, and if you want to auto refill, it's still just tying in two pieces of PVC. Um, mm -hmm. Electrical is the bigger thing. We want to be sure that we accommodate enough for your pump, um, however many pumps you're going to have. So you may, you know, you're going to need maybe probably a 60 amp and a 50 amp if you're going to have a pool and a spa. Um, and, and so we, we can work with that for sure. Okay. Wonderful. Um, Kristen is sharing the wildlife that we left out, the Longhorns and also the Aggies. Yes. I was going to help her out and say that, of course, we eat Longhorns. Yes, we eat this. <laughs> And then Alicia's asking, when do you recommend putting in the septic after the rough end? Really after the exterior of the home is done. So let's, mm -hmm. if it's all hardy plank home after it's painted, um, you can start. And, and again, I would always defer to the building superintendent, your Tilson superintendent to say, Hey, is now a good time to do it. Um, mainly because we don't want to tear anything up, but otherwise if you're going to have any kind of brick or stone on the house after the brick or the stone is complete, after the Mason is done, um, you're probably ready to, to, to gear up and start putting that septic system in. Um, the reason being, again, we don't want the septic system in there, the tanks, the spray heads, all that kind of stuff. And then we're coming out and, and crushing it or running over it by delivering, right. so, you know, we kind of stage the brick or the stone around the house. Um, so make it a little bit easier on the guys. Uh, so they don't have to carry, you know, stone and brick 400 feet. Um, but basically after the outside of the house is done, you should be ready for the septic to go in. Um, but again, always defer to the building superintendent. Right. Awesome. And that is the last question that I see. Cool. Oh. Um, I just say how great you are. Oh, yeah. You're welcome, Alicia. Thank you for watching. Yeah, I'm glad no, to answer all your questions. Appreciate it. Each and every one of you uh, tuning in today. Uh, thanks for bearing with us. Went a little, a little long. So thanks for sticking around. Thank you, Kelsey uh, and Amanda, working in the background, helping us out through this. Thank you, Don, for putting mm -hmm. this on. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, of course, you know, guys, it doesn't have to end here. Okay. So we've got all kinds of content out there for you. We've got 12 design centers that are open seven days a week that uh, we're dying to set appointments with you. And, and so reach out to our new home specialist through the website. They'll be glad to set up an appointment for you. Um, free consultation. Get all these questions answered by local experts uh, to your mm -hmm. specific area. They have people you can reach out to for septic, for culvert, for land clearing, all that kind of good stuff. Um, also, we have, of course, the Facebook page. We have a YouTube channel. We have uh, the award-winning website, all the cool things um, that, that Don and her team have built. Uh, They're super, super helpful. We appreciate we appreciate the feedback that we get from y'all. We get a really mm -hmm. a lot of good feedback, which have led to the awards, by the way. You guys are part of that. Absolutely. Um, so, so thank you. We, we hope they're helpful. And um, we really do genuinely assume to help make you part of the Tilson family. So we hope to see you soon. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys.